Now the story of a remarkable baseball team. The Halifax Vaughn Furriers were the Maritime Junior Baseball Champions back in 1962. They were very good and they were unique. An integrated ball team during a time of some racial tension. Unique too because it was a kind of reverse integration. The Vaughn Furriers began as a black team called the Rangers who rounded out their roster with white players. Tonight in a special documentary report, CTV's Rick Grant has the story of the Vaughn Furriers and their new dream. Recognition in that special place of champions, the Sports Hall of Fame. Winter has come for these old ball players. They played their last game a long time ago. No, it's not shot. It's just I can't straighten it out from pitching all those years, right? Old injuries and age. What do you take for a pain now? But a long time ago, they did it. They really did it. It's in the papers right there in black and white. October 1962. We became the Maritime Junior Championship uh, champions of, uh, uh, from Nova Scotia. Proud to be it. This is the only team photo. Actually, it's just a photocopy of a picture from the Chronicle Herald. It was quite a team. We had more or less an all-star team. And everybody knew and everybody clicked together. A couple of weeks ago, eight members of the 1962 Vaughn Furriers got together. Forty-five years earlier, in 1962, the Furriers began as an all-black team from Central and North End Halifax. We had the Rangers, and from the Rangers, we started picking up teams, uh, players from different teams in the league. White players, pitchers and hitters, they were integrating the black team, but they didn't think of it that way. I think what he's saying is like color or race no, just wasn't a factor. It was, it was, just, it was just people wanted to play ball together. And we were okay. all friends. In 1962, Martin Luther King Jr. was marching for equality in the United States, but blacks in Halifax were struggling with racism too. No black cops firemen or bus drivers in a city that at the time had the greatest concentration of African Canadians per capita in the country. We were friends and we were going to play together and we played ball. Very often against one another. And these Commons kids were colorblind. They saw only talent and friendship. Now Graham Downey wanted them all on the same team, the best black and the best white players he could recruit. Left-hander Gary Furlot was in his last year as a junior when Downey approached him. And uh, I said, you know what, that'd be great, because they got a great team, and I left a great bunch of guys, but I, I met a great bunch of guys, and it was, it was a good year. Diamond Six on the Common was their playground. Frozen in February, just like their memories of 1962. And I just went up and asked some guys, do you need any players? And the guy told me to go see Graham. So I went over and asked Graham, he goes, what do you do? I said, well, I pitch, I do... I can play third base, shortstop, whatever. Roy was a great right hander, you know, had a, a sort of an awkward little wind up, but Roy could throw the ball and, you know, with great speed. Integration? Well, not by design, maybe, but that's what it took to win the prize. The Royals were always the big team. They won every year, they beat everybody. So we figured, well, this is our time to knock them off, and we did it. We really wanted to get it, get the championship. Sure. Uh, That's right. You know, for us, and uh, we thought we could do it with these caliber players. Long before it became cliche, the Halifax Common was the field of dreams for these boys of summer. Memories. <laughs> and there is a lot of those, like the time Graham came out to the mound to tell Gord how to pitch to a power hitter standing at the plate. He said, "This guy can really hit." He said, uh, "I think you better throw it high on him." I said, no, Graham, I think i got to throw it low on him. <laughs> anyway, we argued a little bit. Graham walked away. He said, geez, I could never tell you nothing anyway. He walked off. I threw it my way, and the guy banged the ball out. And after that, I started to do it Graham's way. <laughs> the team was packed with talent, and it had to be, because not everyone could turn up for every game. We had so many players, you could put them and shift them around to different positions. We were pretty versatile. Uh, everybody seemed to be able to excel and come up with the, the clinch hits when we really needed them. Versatile in other sports as well. Wayne Maxner went on to play in the NHL for Boston. Dave Downey became Canadian middleweight boxing champ. 
but he almost made his pro boxing debut during a game in Truro that another fighter was attending. And Les Sprague was up on the hill, and it was white at the time, and, and there was a bunch of guys around Les Sprague, and they were hollering, and they were giving us a real hard time. He wanted to go up and fight him right there and then. He was trying to leave third base to go fight him. But the team stayed focused. Big plays, like the one in Dartmouth. Ninth inning, two out. Furrier's up by a run, man on second, charging for home on a hit to Jim McDonald in right field. Show him out on the fly. And uh, one of our new teammates who just joined the team, Sam Corman, said, well, that ball didn't even bounce. I can't believe that. And the team had big bats as well. And then he used to hit the ball right, right, right over the there. See that Crookshanks is? Roby, towards Roby Street was right field. Then he used to hit right over there Crookshanks. And uh, Jimmy used to hit them real in the street. The fans loved them. They were a community ball team uh, that were having a good time and were good at the sport. And there were plenty of fans.